And thank you for watching this live stream. We're in the second week of the prayer, Heal Our Land. And Beth, last week we had an amazing conversation, didn't we? We sure did. And, and so joining us again this week, our amazing champions, <laughs> friends oh, of ours, yes they are. <laughs> pastors yes. Jeffrey and Nicola Smith, joining us again as pastors of Strong Tower Church right here in Fredericksburg. They let us in their church. Absolutely. And yes. they said we could come on in. Yes, and, welcome. Uh, yes. And here we are enjoying friendship and conversation. Yes. Um, you guys are amazing people and amazing friends, and we're so glad to have you back with us again. Um, some of the topics that and the walkaways that we had, I'll share some of mine, you share some of yours, but I walked away from the conversation in part one uh, with just how important, how important it is to not remain silent mm -hmm. in these times yes. and that you guys really need friends to reach out and just ask the simple question, how are you? Mm -hmm. How are you doing? How are you dealing with this pain in our mm -hmm. world right now? How about mm -hmm. you, Kevin? Well, I, I asked the question, how, how should we respond? And you just simply said, a call, a call. And just acknowledgement. And I, I've been inspired by that. And, uh, and also we talked about how hard sometimes it is to pick up that 600 pound phone mm -hmm. to say something so simple. Yeah. Sure. And, and we know the enemy in between trying to break up relationship. And we, we just got to break through that. And when I did and called you, um, man, it just set something free inside of me. Coming down here, we stopped at Panera Bread and I was just exercising. I feel so free to say something now. <laughs> and this uh, young black man, he was, uh, he was serving us. And when we went to leave, I was like, I need to go and talk to him. And I walked up to him, not even knowing what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. And I just looked at him and he looked up at me and we were eye to eye. And I said, hey, man, I just want you to know I'm with you. Yeah. And he thanked me three times. Wow. He thanked me so much. I didn't know the next thing to say. <laughs> so I turned around and I just walked yeah. off. Yeah. But I felt good yeah. 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 That's yeah. Great. about that. Yeah. Uh, and I think once we break through, once we send that text, pick up that phone, you know, reach out to somebody on Facebook, get in the car, just stop by somebody's house, meet somebody. Yeah. This isn't rocket science. No. This is relationship, Absolutely. isn't it? Absolutely. And uh, so that was, that was my big takeaway and what I want everybody to hear because that's the practical side of it. It's so easy to be part of the solution. Yeah. Our brothers and sisters are hurting desperately and it would be wrong for us to not acknowledge the pain. Mm. What would you say to that, Nicola? What's that like? I would say that, or I am saying that, you know, when you do that, when you reach out and acknowledge the pain, it just tears down those walls of them versus us. Yes. Mm. Yeah, okay. When you open up your heart to say, I know you're hurting, I care that you're hurting, I'm here for you, Whatever the enemy is trying to work to say that, hey, you're in this all by yourself. Mm. Nobody is concerned about this. Mm. Nobody of a different race really, really, you know, cares or will stand up with you. Those lies are just torn down mm. just by that simple act of saying, of, of showing care. And of saying, I'm here for you. I stand with you. Yeah. I know your life matters because it matters to me. Mm. Yeah. Yes. It's so good. Yeah. Well, obviously we're here because this, the world has been shaken. Yes. So shaken by the tragedy that happened with George Floyd mm. and before him, Ahmaud yes. Arbery and many, many others. Yes. And the world is looking at the church right now. Yes. Mm. They're looking at the church and... Jeffrey, what was that like for you, the moment that George Floyd was killed? Yeah. So, Beth, it was, a, it was a tough night. It was a Tuesday night, I believe, and I had been working in my office and hadn't been paying attention to my phone. I was leaving my office downstairs in the home and grabbed my phone, and I saw these messages and texts and phone calls, and 
immediately I went to look at the news and say, what's, what's going on? And um, I began seeing the video, walked into my bedroom and turned the television on and there it was. And my son walked into the room with me and so he's seeing those images at the same time Seven, I am. 17. 15 years 15 old. 15 years old. 15. I'm watching it and I'm devastated. Yeah. I'm watching it and my heart is just flooded with a gamut of emotions. Everything from anger to fear to frustration to hopelessness to disgust, all of it. And then I'm watching it and knowing my son is right beside me and feeling him react to that as well. Mm -hmm. So all of that is there. Very difficult to go to bed on that, that night. And in many ways, even more difficult to wake up the next morning. I knew I was gonna have a talk with my son to try to start processing what he saw. And that feeling of despair, of hopelessness, that this is never gonna change. We've been here, I don't know how many times, for centuries, and we're still seeing this kind of brutality. And the verse that began to help me was in Habakkuk chapter one, where the prophet calls out to God, and he says, how long? Yeah. Will I see injustice? How long will I cry out violence and you do not hear? How long? Yeah. Do we have to see, do I have to see this calamity and trouble? And he then has another complaint that he airs out to God in chapter one as well. It said a couple of things to me. Number one, God's big enough to absorb our pain. That he goes to God and he, he, he empties his heart of the frustration, the emotion, the angst. God's big enough to absorb our pain. Number two, yeah. it's important that we feel what we feel. Yeah. That's the humanity. Yeah. And I believe we have to feel the feelings because that is what moves us to action mm. yeah. and keeps us from succumbing to the illness of the soul that is indifference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Indifference causes us to become passive and dismissive of things. You gotta feel it, mm -hmm. but we can't become a victim to it. Yeah. The Bible says, be angry, sin, sin not. not. Yeah, yeah. No, you better good. be angry. So, <clears throat> so, but don't, don't. And, but then what, what helped me, Kevin, is when you go to chapter two, you see the Lord's response to Habakkuk's grievance. He says, write the vision down, make it plain, yeah. so that he who reads it will run with it. It was as though God was saying, I know, I see. Don't get distracted by the trouble. Yeah. Don't get disheartened by all of the violence and injustice. Write the vision down. It's almost as though he's saying, stay focused on the promise. Yeah, that's really Stay good. focused mm. that justice will come. Yeah. Equality will come. Yeah. yeah. Freedom will come. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's kind of been the thing wow. I've been holding on to. <laughs> yeah. So there's hope. There's hope. There's hope. We have there's to hope. hang on. Yeah. We cannot give up. Um, I, I have a question that I want to bring up. I, I know you speak to this, and I want to ask you, what's the difference between injustice and racism? Because hmm. you talk about it as being two different things. Yes, sir. Okay. They're two different things, and because they're two different things, they require different remedies, different approaches. Racism is when one race sees itself as superior to another. Uh, racism, that view, that mentality, is really a condition of the heart. It's a belief system, it's a mindset. It's really a spirit that, that corrodes the heart to believe that one race is superior and another race is inferior. Mm, yeah. Right. That's a belief system. That's a, that's a heart issue. The remedy to that is transformation. Okay. That only the Holy Spirit can do. The Holy Spirit transforms the heart and that belief system, that mentality is eradicated. Yeah. And that prejudice, that bias, that racism is removed. Yeah. Now, 
alongside of that, you have injustice. That is a violation of somebody else. It's taking action against somebody else. Now, that's different. Okay. You cannot like me, and that'll be all well, fine, and good. I can't do anything about that. But when you take action against me, that's different. Okay. Now your belief system has manifested and become an action that is harmful to me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now we're talking about the need for the change of systems. Mm. Because injustice, injustice is when you begin to see systematic racism. Okay. Where now our systems, our institutions, our laws actually cause there to be injustices or violations against people groups. Okay. So we have to work on both the condition of man's heart racism, Mm -hmm. but we also have to work on injustices that live in systems. Mm -hmm. Okay. The way you address systems is you need a strategy. Okay. That's not a hard issue. You need a strategy to Mm -hmm. change the laws, to change the systems, to change the institutions. I got you. That makes sense? Okay. There's a, there's a quote. Let me see if I can find it that I think is so good by a gentleman by the name of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Listen to this. He says, we are not to simply bandage the wounds of victims beneath the wheels of injustice. We are to drive a spoke into the wheel itself. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So he's saying this, the system, the structure, yeah. the institution has to be reformed. It has to be changed. Yeah. We can't just deal with the wounds of those that have been perpetrated against, but we got to change the system. So racism, a spiritual condition. Yes, sir. Got to go to God for remedy. Injustice, that one needs reform. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So that's where, that's where we need a lot of work. Yes. And would, would you say that if we, as God's people, leaders that are watching us today, if, if they can be part of the solution of reform, that if we can work on the injustice, because what we do is how God responds to us. Yeah. So if we can work harder at the reform, God will respond to that with his spirit to break down this racism. Yeah. So we, we got some hard work We got some hard do. work. Sometimes we want to think, we, well, you know, we're, we're better than we were. We're better than we were. Yes. We're better than we were. We can say that so long that we'll stop working on getting better. Right. So I see that. And uh, I, I know for myself, I want to start working on that. Yeah. And let reform begin in my house. Yeah. Well, I can't help but ask the question. When you talked about Habakkuk and when you said system and writing a vision down and mm. making it clear, yeah. mm making it plain. I feel like j- too many generations have passed without making it clear, mm. wow. without making it plain. Yeah. 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 And so I can't help but get excited when I think about the millennials, mm. the millennials. Yeah. What potential do you believe is in our millennials and our Gen Zs right now? I think there's a lot. You know, one of the things that causes me to be hopeful in this season is seeing the diversity of those that are responding to this challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm. Not only from the standpoint of ethnicity, but also from the standpoint of youth, Mm -hmm. uh, of age. You have the young and the old that are marching together. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mm -hmm. yes. I think, Kevin, we have to pray and you have to protest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Prayer and protest produces progress. And oh, so we have good. to pray. Say, say, say it again. <laughs> oh, I want to slow down. That, that's a, that's a, that's that's a takeaway. really good. Yeah. Right there. Say that again. Prayer, the spiritual component, and protests, us getting out and using our First Amendment rights, bringing to attention the injustices. Yes. You have to pray and you have to pro, uh, protest because that's what produces progress. progress. That's awesome. We can't just pray. Yeah. Because the systems have to be changed. You're right. And we can't just work on the systems because we know man's heart needs to change. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to pray. We have to protest. 
that produces progress. Yeah. So good. Yeah, that's really good. So sometimes we, we would think that protest is not a good thing. Sure. Because we see it escalate in some cities where it's, it's just out of control. And I've hear, heard you say it over and over again. You don't condone that. Right. Um, but we can't make that our, our definition of protest no. and say, okay, we're not doing that. Right. Uh, so we all that know that we can do something and be part of the solution and have peaceful protest and exercise uh, you, you know, what we have the capability of doing and saying, um, if we say we're going to stay home, then we get what is happening right. in the cities. Right. And, it, and it's fearful to get out there. I mean, it's, it's like, do I want to show up to that? Yeah. Uh, and, and maybe it isn't uh, right down on the streets after 10 o'clock at night that I should be showing up. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll show up at 9 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Because I know all the people that were there sure. last night, they're sleeping. sound asleep and probably going to sleep till three in the afternoon. <laughs> right. Timing is everything, so let, right? So let, let's get up and do our protest yeah. in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. I believe people do want to hear. Uh, they do want to hear and they want to yeah. hear from the right voices. And uh, I, I just want to say, this is our protest right now. Mm. Right. This yeah. is our protest. Yeah. yeah. In, in the most healthy way that I can say it is that what is... What is happening is not working. No. So we sat here today, we're asking you the tough questions, yeah. and we're gaining wisdom. Yeah. And in real time, we are protesting and pushing that new way of thinking right. out through the lens to people in real time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's, I think yeah. that's part amazing. Of what, part of what I appreciate about you and Beth is that you're, you're using both the private and the public. So one of the things I'm kind of concerned about, quite honestly, is that while this is center stage, it's easy for people to post something online, to post something on social media, public, but there's no private application. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you can have somebody say, I'm for the movement, I'm for, you know, justice, but they won't reach out to the people in their own sphere with yeah. a phone call. Right. Yeah. And we haven't always gotten that right. No, but we haven't. But there's just a fire in us right now. Yeah. And we just want to do better. We want our church to do better. We want yeah. our people to do better. And, and sometimes, like I said in part one, you know, people don't know what to say. They're mm -hmm. so fearful, mm -hmm. they might say the wrong thing, mm -hmm. so they choose yeah. not to say anything. One of those... One of those issues of conflict right now is what's wrong with saying all lives matter? Mm -hmm. What's wrong with saying that? I think there's people still uneducated yeah. in that. Yeah. Can you help us out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want to say anything about that or you want me to jump in? Of course we do know that all lives matter because we're all made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. That yeah. is exactly right. But in this time and season, we want to look at the part of the body that is hurting. Mm. I've heard the illustration, if you, if you are in a neighborhood and you have a home on fire, right. you don't want to throw water on the homes that are not burning up. Right. We need the water on those homes that are on fire. So therefore, the attention might be on the black lives because the black lives have not been valued um, to all the way they should be. Mm -hmm. And so we want our black brothers and sisters to know, you know what, your life matters just as much as anyone else's yeah. life matters. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. We know yeah. that you're, you're made in the image of God as well. Yeah. And yeah. we want you to know that. Yeah. I heard a story, and I missed it on the news, where there was a lady in a store, mm. and she, she had her mask on. She was an elderly um, white woman, and she walked past a black uh, man, and he had a mask on as well, and she turned around and came back to him, and she said, I just want you to know that your life matters to me. Mm. Oh. 
And it Beautiful. was such a powerful moment. Beautiful. They end up hugging each other. You know, forget the mask. <laughs> they just, yeah. they end up hugging each other because it was a powerful moment for him and for everyone that has opportunity to yeah. see the video. I don't know how it was videoed, yeah. but it was. So I think what we're saying is your life matters to us. Mm. And I know that for decades and centuries, maybe you haven't always been treated as if your life matters, but it does. And we want you to know that black lives do matter. Yeah. Yes. And, and there's a lot of well-intended people that have said it. And, and Nicole, you said it's, it's absolutely right that all, all lives uh, do matter. And, but the minute you hear it right after Black Lives Matter, <laughs> it's, it's a, a response of incense, sen, yes. <laughs> insensitivity. Yes. There, right. I almost got it right. out. Uh, and, it's, and it's really a, a response that creates a debate. Yeah, mm. it's like whoa, whoa now. Mm. Um, let's talk about us too, <laughs> right? Mm. You know, it's, like it's fear based. Yeah, mm, it, it, right. exactly. And so it's 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 defensive. Yeah, mm. and um, so timing is everything. <laughs> yeah. Sure, timing is 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 everything. So I saw a great meme this week, and I'm sure probably you've seen it as well. And it's basically off the illustration that is in the Bible with the good shepherd, who when That's right. one sheep wanders from the fold. The yeah. shepherd goes and finds the one. That's right. That's good. The man. shepherd goes and finds the one. Yeah. And the picture of, in the meme was 99 sheep holding up a sign that said, Sheep matter. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Sheep matter. Yeah. <laughs> and they do matter. Yeah. But the purpose of the illustration was what Jesus' heart yeah. was to go after the one that was hurting. That's yes. right. Yes. Yeah. To go after the one that needed That's right. sure. an, a yeah. shepherd. Yeah. And that's what this is all about. Let's yeah. not um, rally for our own rights, but let's be concerned about the one who is hurting. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that's our brothers and sisters. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I can't help but go back to Revelation again. Yeah. Because to Jesus, <laughs> to God, the picture of heaven that I see in Revelation. Chapter 7, verse 9, it says, After these things I looked and beheld a great multitude, which no one could number, of all nations, tribes, yes. peoples, and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, all clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. And this is what... I want, I want my church to look like heaven. Yes, yes. I want my church to look like heaven. Yes. I want my church to sound like heaven. Yeah. Yes. I want my church to feel like heaven. Yes. And the only way that can happen is for it to look like heaven and sound like heaven and to be a reflection of God's heart, his amazing diversity, his amazing creation, yeah. which is to be celebrated, yeah. Yeah. not feared. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, sometimes we can think, well, that's, That'll be heaven. Heaven will be different. But, but Jesus taught us otherwise when he taught us how to pray. Mm. Thy yeah. kingdom yes. come. come. Thy will be done on, on earth, earth as, as, as it, it is, is in heaven. heaven. Yeah. He's telling us you can pull down heaven. Yeah. You can make earth yeah. look. So to say it'll never be that way or we can't do that. Um, I, I, would, I would say this, that the church really needs to jump on that prayer. Yeah. And we need to do the hard work. Mm. We need to be part of reform. Mm -hmm. We need to be part of humbling ourselves. Mm. And I just, I just believe God's given his church an authority mm. in this season. Yeah. But we do have to lead. We have to do something. Yeah. We have to make the phone calls. I know I'm, in, I'm being so transformed by this conversation we've had over the last two weeks. And knowing that uh, it's going to be on our site, it'll be on YouTube, people can watch it whenever they want. I'm calling all of my leaders in the mm. state of West Virginia because I believe together, and I'm not blaming them, I'm just saying together we can help, we can do something incredible, we can bring reform. But I want it to start, as Beth says, in my church, yeah. in my home, in my church, in my state, in leadership, 
I do believe people want this, Jeffrey. I just don't think they know what to do mm -hmm. and how much recourse, how much uh, hard work it might be, how much criticism they might have to take. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you, I broke through that wall mm. last week. Mm. I broke, I'm a pastor. I should be out there. Mm. But I, I just had to apologize for it. I apologized to our church. I apologized to other pastors. And I said, I'm breaking through that wall. I'm picking up the phone. Yeah. I'm going to see people. Yeah. I told you, when I called you, I said, if we can get together, there is, I don't care, there is nothing on my schedule. Sure did. <laughs> I don't care if it takes a week, two weeks, yeah. a month. I ain't doing anything till I talk yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, and I, I, just, I just see people out there that want to be part of the solution. Yeah. We have a great church. We have a great community. Uh, we have uh, a great state. We have a great uh, leadership within our state that I've been able to interact with. And I'm hearing this common voice, I want to help. Yeah. And I just feel like a lot of the words that you have spoken and the wisdom that you have delivered and the insight you have given us mm. is going to spark something in more than just Beth and I, but in countless thousands of people that will watch this and then who knows where it spreads to. Yeah. So I, I just want to know what, uh, for one last thing, what else would you like to tell the people that are, that are watching today? Yeah, yeah. I love the Lord's Prayer that you just quoted from. And immediately when you started quoting, I thought about how Jesus instructs us to start. He says, start with our Father. Mm -hmm. And it, it's the understanding that he can't be your father unless you recognize that he's my father too. Wow. Yeah. Our father. Our. It's, it's this understanding that we're in it together. And I think that's part of what I'm seeing is that we cannot allow ourselves to fall into the trap of us versus them, whatever mm -hmm. that is. Yeah. White versus black, black versus white, law enforcement versus community, community against law enforcement, brown against white. I mean, if we can go yeah. with all of these, yeah. us versus them. And we have to understand that, that really we're talking about humanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you see the murder of George Floyd, when you hear about the other tragedies from a human level, mm -hmm. you should be able to respond with empathy, with concern, yeah. with, 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 with a desire to see justice where injustice has yeah. been perpetrated from a human standpoint. And I think it's easy for us to get into sides. And when we do that, now we have to defend our side rather than just call wrong, wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Injustice, injustice. Inhumanity, inhumanity. Yeah. No matter who it is. Yeah. I love the idea of us coming together in yes. this season. There's something about us coming together. Psalms 133. Beautiful. Where there is unity, God says, I will command Man a blessing. A blessing. Yes, sir. Yes. With the same authority that he said, let there be light, and light came. There was no debate. There was no fight. Light came. Darkness had to go. He says, when I see that kind of unity, I will, I will command blessing. Mm. Life yes. forevermore. If we could ever get into unity, agreement, if we could ever come and work together rather than us versus one yeah. another, God says, I'll get into that. Where two or three are gathered, I'm in the midst. Yes. And I believe God wants to get into the middle of this situation. We welcome him by coming into agreement with one yeah. another and standing yeah. in unity. Mm. Well, I'm just excited about leading again, you know, because Beth, God has given us uh, great influence and now we know how to gear that and we believe that uh, we'll bring healing and reform and a new pathway for us to walk on from here on out. I just want to tell you guys, you look gorgeous. <laughs> you guys are, you know what? You look just as good this week 
as you did last week because you're wearing the same clothes. Come on. As a matter of fact, we are all wearing the same, the same clothes. clothes. In case you didn't notice. Hey, we're, it, it's kind of it's kind of like The Voice. You know, they do it six weeks in a row. We That's just right. did it two weeks. Right. Yes. And uh, but oh my goodness, we have just enjoyed sitting here having this conversation. And I do. I feel forever changed. And thank you for talking with us. And we've uh, we've listened a lot, mm. and we're taking away a lot. Mm. And I know that what you have communicated is just going to bring so many answers. And I believe a lot of healing, a lot of knowledge. Uh, to people watching our live stream. And I'd just like to close this out with, with you praying, because mm. I just believe that there's, there's such a great voice mm. coming from this house, coming from this church that you and Nicola lead. We love to hear your voice, mm. and especially the voice that you have in this season. Would you pray for everyone, should please? be my honor. And thank you once again for allowing us to be a part of this critical conversation yeah. in this crucial time. Great. <laughs> Father, we thank you for being a good God. Yes. We thank you that we have the opportunity to call you our Father. I thank you for Kevin, and I thank you for Beth. I thank you for Airborne Church. Father, I just ask that in this season and at this time that you would cause their church and really churches all across the country. Yes. To be able to understand this significant moment that we are in. Help us, oh God, as a church to repent where we need to repent, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to rethink where we need to rethink. I pray, oh God, that you would do a work in our hearts that would cause us to love one another as you love us. Father, I pray that the walls of separation and division would come down. I pray that racism and bigotry, hatred would be uprooted in our hearts first, oh God. Forgive us for not demonstrating and exemplifying Christ the way that we should. God, I ask that as we repent and as we are renewed in our hearts, use us to make a difference. Use us to be a voice for justice, for equality. Use us to be a voice for change and for transformation. I pray, oh God, that in this hour and in this time, that your spirit would move upon your church, that we would be salt and light, yes. making yes. an impact for the glory and for the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Maybe you're listening to this message today and perhaps you have never invited Jesus into your heart. Can I just encourage you today? It would be the easiest, the best decision you ever made in your life to make that simple prayer. Dear Jesus, come into my life. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my ways and lead me in your ways. And I promise you, God wants to change us from the inside out, not the outside in. And if you pray that prayer, we want to celebrate that decision with you. So you can text us and let us know that you've made that decision and eternal life belongs to you.